Welcome to the tutorial video for part four of module one. And we've got our sample homework assignment and we've added two questions to it and we're going to add a third. Uh, one thing to mention is now that we have questions in here, you can reorder them pretty easily by changing the numbers in these drop down boxes. So if you need to shuffle them around, if you make a mistake and need to remove a question, just check the box and hit remove. We're going to, of course, leave things the way they were. And the last way we're going to do is find a question by filtering our search results. So I want to go ahead and imagine we're doing some other assignment now. And say I'm in an algebra course, and I want to get them to graph a linear equation with two variables. So just a regular linear function, but I want to make sure that they're going to graph it, not just pick some graph out of a multiple choice problem. Okay, well, we're going to go to the libraries to narrow down the search. And uh, I still have some of these boxes checked from last time when I was searching for a trig problem. Go ahead and hit the uncheck all button, and that'll get you a nice fresh set of libraries where nothing is checked. Okay, and uh, we're going to be looking under algebra. And linear equations in two variables is where you get the linear functions, and I want them to look at the graphs, so we'll go ahead and pull that up, and we're going to hit use libraries. All right. Now I need to uncheck search all libraries and clear out the search box, because I want to look at all the problems from this graphs library. So let's hit search with those things empty, and here's a look at all the different problems under graphs of linear equations of two variables. We've already talked about the description of those, but what about all this other information? Well, the first thing to bring up is an icon that looks a little bit like a triangle in a square with a CC. These are icons that indicate there's a video attached to that question, typically a tutorial video. And the CC means that it is closed captioned. So you'll notice that some don't have the CC and some don't have the video attached. So maybe you do want to narrow down and make sure you pick one that has a video so the students have that learning aid. That's up to you. We talked about the ID number and that's a good way to get a problem that you've already used and don't remember what the description was. And we talked about the preview button where we can take a look at what the student would see when you give them this problem. But how about the type? So questions are typed based on multiple choice, which will be called choices, or matching, or where they put in a numerical answer that's calculated, or there's multi-part problems. Now my original goal was to find a problem where the student would have to draw the linear equation of two variables. So I might want to sort this by clicking where it says type, and then go down and just look at the ones where they're drawing. So that'll put all those together. So now I can narrow down to, I want to make sure I pick one of these where they're going to draw. The next time, or next category, or the next column to the right is the number of times this question has been used. The larger that number is, the more reliable the question typically is. So if you're unsure about a problem, don't pick one that has a real small number like two, rather pick one that has larger numbers in the hundreds or even thousands. Average time is the average time in minutes that this question takes students on average. So if you want a question to be easy, pick a number that has, pick a question that has a small average time. If you want a more challenging problem, pick one where the average time is larger. And that's all the information we really have, but that's enough to go on. So we know we want to narrow down to the ones where we're drawing. Let's say we also want one with a video, and I want it to be closed captioned. And uh, say I want a large number of times used, and I want a small average time because I want it to be pretty easy. Then that would make it seem like something like this one. Oops, that one's not a... Graph. Looking at 
the wrong page, sorry. Um, maybe like this one. So this is the one I find in the notebook is the 3677. That's got a really n large number of times used, a pretty small um, amount of time it takes students, pretty good scores on those. So it's a pretty easy problem. It's really reliable. I know the students are going to have to actually draw the line and it's got a video to go with it. So that sounds like a really good problem to use and I want to make sure I want to add that to my assignment. So you see how all this information can be used to narrow down your search and make sure you get the question that's right for you. All right, now that we've checked the box, we just go up and hit add using defaults and we are now done. So since this is the last part of this module, we don't want to add any more questions. And we probably just want to hit done to say we're done with the assessment. This will take us back to the course page and your assessment should appear right where you picked the add an item option. Now, you can always get back to that list of questions by hitting questions and change that around. And you can get back to those settings that we set up at the beginning by hitting settings. You can also see what the student would see, and that's a good idea after you create an assignment, is to click on it and see what the student would see. And here are those three problems that we picked. Now, this isn't any assignment we'd actually set up because we're covering three different courses here, um, but that's just for instructional purpose. You get the idea, and I think it looks like a pretty good assignment. So you can compare your homework section X with the one that I completed at the bottom here, this sample one. And if you have any questions, <laughs> don't use that forum because you're in a sort of course by yourself. Send me an email at mwatts at tcc.edu. Now we're going to close this module up and you're going to have to proceed on to module two. And I'll meet you there.